Welcome to the Marvelous Post Blip Podcast, a podcast on all things Marvel on the Fangirl Zone. I'm Sharon is the power broker, damn it, Steve. <laughs> I'm Avenger, I told you so, Dave. I'm Sean, fangirl ass, I'm still in denial. Today we're talking about episode six of Falcon and Winter Soldier, the finale of maybe season one, entitled One World, One People, written by Malcolm Spellman and Joseph Sawyer, and directed by... Kari Scogland. All right, initial reactions, Dave. As I've said before, we don't give ratings. And I was tempted to give it a two and a half or a two out of five. Not my favorite episode. Of course, if we're grading on a curve, it's better than a lot of other things out there. Yes. I ultimately gave it three out of five golden cats waving goodbye. <laughs> I didn't like the Lord of the Ring endings, but everything got tied up one thing after another. It, the whole show seemed to lurch from one scene to another, and it didn't help that it was at night. Why night? Yeah. Why not? All that? Trying to save money on the last episode? He can't see the wires hanging from Sam when he does his angel entrance. You know what I mean? And uh, I saw a great note on the internet from Jermaine Lucier at uh, io9. This is no spoiler, but it ends with the uh, the TV sh- uh, title card saying Captain America and Winter Soldier. Right. Instead of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And he said, like, why wasn't it White Wolf? I mean, if, if Sam can uh, become woke and, and ease all his troubles and make up his mind, why didn't they extend the same courtesy to Bucky? Yeah. Call him the White Wolf or something. I only think that didn't change because we haven't gotten the information on that. Well, we kind of did. If they're going to go to a movie, right? Uh-huh. Why bother? Yeah. Doing a, yeah, with everything on their plate. I can't see him doing a, ser- a series. That'd be great. I don't see it, though. I mean, Bucky will be in the in the Captain America movie. And for those who don't have the news, it's been rumored for a bit, but confirmed Friday. Right. This past week that there's going to be a fourth Captain America movie with uh, Sam Wilson taking over the reins, taking over the shield. Yep. Which is good for Anthony Mackie. He's pretty great. Hey, Sean. Well, I cried. <laughs> so... <laughs> I know, you're shocked, but I liked it. I understand what you were saying, Dave, with like everything kind of being wrapped up. I had a lot of very loud reactions during this, and I was a little bit upset because I was half expecting to see new Falcon, but instead we see him kind of hanging out in a oh, a yeah. bunker somewhere. Yeah. I'm like, damn it. I was still, I'm super mad about Sharon and I've been <laughs> going down rabbit holes. <laughs> so this should be interesting. So if you haven't been reading every article to see what's going on, I highly suggest doing that because <laughs> there's an interesting one that it's leading into secret invasion mm. and that Sharon isn't Sharon. Ah. Yeah. What do you call that species from outer space? The scrolls? Scrolls. Yeah, yeah the scrolls. Could be. So Good. it's like, okay, maybe I feel a little better. But I kind of want Captain America. And uh, by the way, I did look up just really quickly how much truth red, white, and black is. And yeah, it has a little out of my price range. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 wow. So oh, it, it's gone up. It Like many collector items do. So right. who knows how much it'll end up. Maybe I can find it to read it. When I seen it last, it was over $600. Oh, yeah. And oh, I don't well. know if that was like a hardcover complete or yeah. if it was just the first issue. Well, if you buy yourself one, you better get one for the rest of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, as soon as that Powerball comes through, yeah. I got you guys. All right, cool. And I'd give one away, too. So, you know, everybody hope for me to win Powerball and we'll have a giveaway yeah. like that. You know what I was thinking? If they do, if, well, it looks like they are going to go for with the Captain America movie. The way it did end, this is going to be uh, Sam's mess to clean up. He's the one who brought her back, talking about uh, Sharon. Sharon. Yes, Sharon. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did read something too, which I know we're going to get to it, but Walker's reaction at the end was his actual reaction to the suit. <laughs> like with what he said, that was his. I forget his name, Russell, Wyatt Russell, Yeah, his actual reaction to the suit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I think that makes it just a little bit better, too. It's black. So like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the same. It's just black. Steve, what was your reaction to this episode? Well, I enjoyed it immensely, but yeah, there were some things that kind of bothered me. Especially the re- reveal that Sharon was actually the power <laughs> broker, of course. <laughs> But I kind of like the way they tied up most of the loose ends 
Now, I did find it interesting that Walker shows up and actually is all about taking Carrie down until he's given a choice and he makes the right one. And it's like, what? <laughs> Where oh, yeah. did that come from? And they get all bro together. Like, right. Hey, yeah. Huh? No. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so wanted them to bring the, the mutants in right here. I'm like, come on, where's Magneto? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that moment is like, there you go. You just brought the mutants in or you can bring Spider-Man back. Come on, do something. I know with all the heroes in New York City, you'd think. Right. Uh, yeah. Everybody they would be there. Anybody. <laughs> I know. They could have pulled one. Yeah. Anybody is right. Spider-Man, Daredevil. They brought Punisher in, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, come on. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I actually thought they were going to introduce a major superhero. Right. They keep which would have diminished that they're it. They're going to bring these people in. And so we're assuming it's going to be on a small screen so they can yeah. tie oh. it in bigger somehow. But I mean, we're going into this is part of phase four, and they've already announced phase five. Right. Phase four is supposed to, I think, officially end at the end of this year, I believe, because I think it's supposed to be with Spider-Man No Way Home is supposed to end phase four, taking us into phase five, Oh, hmm. because the multiverse is all like bringing us into phase five somehow. Yeah, that'll start. Does that start with Doctor Strange? It I guess. actually is bleeding through from Spider-Man. From yeah, what I read. No Way Home. Okay. Yeah. So no, that, that's one of their weaknesses weird. then is everything is a sequel to something else, yeah. you know, or if it's not a sequel, then it's a prequel or it's a backdoor pilot. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> like it's back, all it has together. to be really clever for a backdoor pilot and, and let, to make it more than obvious. And some of it, it was more than obvious, like with Agent Walker and what's her name there? Contessa. Yeah. That weakens the whole story. In my opinion, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think they've done a really good job at world building as opposed to, say, DC. Oh, which yeah, I, for sure. Not to say that I don't enjoy the DC movies for what they are. So don't send hate mail. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. <laughs> but world building wise, MCU is tied TV to big screen to even animated it's like all together whereas we're not getting that with dc it's like it's fractured and i really wish i mean they had had such a good tv presence they could have totally tied it into the big screen and holy crap they would have probably like blown away everything mcu's been working on for however many years decades I, at this I point thought for sure that was going to be jeff john's job but i guess his power was more limited than i thought because he he was going to be the what kevin feige right dc universe yep. that ties everything together and feige's a genius said it. A right. genius. And I thought Jeff Jones, he's such a great writer that he would like steer it. But uh, uh, I don't think they've settled their power sharing at the top of that masthead. Right. But that's okay because we have the MCU and and I will pet the puppy because that's how I'm looking at the MCU. It's like, <laughs> this is a cute little puppy. I'm going to watch it play and watch grow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we get into the episode recap, if you can call it that? Because it because. says absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, and Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, team up on a global adventure. <laughs> no, it's in all York, in New York like City. The recap yeah, the it's series. all in New York City in the dark. <laughs> that sounds like what they gave. Like, this is what the show is going to be about. Right. Like, originally. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you should have did more dramatic. And they're going on a global adventure. <laughs> Maybe that's me. They go from one uh, ethnic restaurant to the other <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> have you tried this? <laughs> Let's go down here. All right, this borough. All right, Joe. Oh, well, <laughs> let's start with the GRC. We pick up things where they left off with the flag smashers holding the GRC hostage, intent on stopping the vote that would send millions of refugees back to their countries. Now, I still felt like some of them were like on board with not having this vote, not doing this, but the way it ended at the end, I'm like, oh, maybe I was wrong about some of those people and they were really going to do it anyway. Bucky yeah. meets up with someone who I was like, who the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> some random guy. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden pulls off the weird face and it's Sharon in disguise. It's like, hey, don't worry. Nobody's looking for me here. Like, are you sure? But yes. oops. Yeah. I'm like, hmm. And I just started getting mad because I'm like, damn it, this is really going to be real at this point. Because I was still in denial about the power broker. Right. I didn't want her. I'm like, you gave the speech that was actually Captain America's speech at Aunt Peggy's funeral. Come on. Right. 
<laughs> I was so mad when it like officially was was done. I'm like, you know what? Old man Steve needs to show up and just like, I'm sorry. You yes. Old man Steve. <laughs> Give her Steve a gets tongue fake. lashing. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's kissed her before, so uh, he'll be able to tell. Wait a minute. <laughs> But anyway, we see, I love Bucky entering like the cordoned off area, by the way. Yeah. So you just, just let him let through. through. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Bar or no, Sergeant Barnes. Yeah, it's like, Sergeant go ahead. Barnes. It's like, what? what? Okay. Everybody knows you, I guess. Yeah. Give that man a promotion, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Wait, no, I thought he was Sergeant way back in the first Avenger. Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you said he got a promotion. No, Sorry. No, we'll give, give him one. one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the ranks. So somebody would have to help me out. Like, what's the next level up? Yeah. Next level up would be like a lieutenant, then on the captain, major, lieutenant, colonel, colonel, general. Oh, man. They <laughs> no. just skipped Steve way ahead of him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Major Barnes, major winter soldier. Anyway, uh, they head inside with no problems, even going through <laughs> the metal detector. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> but at this time, we also see Carly urging everybody forward to the next stage of their plan, not caring, which I thought was interesting because when she mentioned something later, like her people kind of stop and look at her like, hold on a second. I was like, oh, I think they're they're having a little rift inside the Flag Smashers, perhaps. Yep. But her people up at, in the GRC, who don't know what's going on with her personally right now, decide to gas everyone. And <laughs> they still don't know what's going on. All they know is it's forcing evacuation. Of course, we have, who was it Bucky or Sam? I'm totally forgetting now. Who said, no, don't. Don't send them down. This is Sam. Like a misdirect. Yeah. Okay. Because we get to see Sam in his new Captain America red, white, and blue Falcon suit. So it's like a mashup, which I loved. And I guess a lot of people were pissed because they're like, well, they spoiled it. <laughs> okay. Well, here's, here's the thing Marvel shouldn't release the toys before the show or movie if they don't want people to know what's happening. Right. <laughs> Just a thought. Classic, though. I mean, uh, toys have been spoiling TV and movie properties for, I don't know, decades now. Right. right? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was great. I loved how the suit was. So it, it did look much better than the toy, I will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I didn't like about the suit was the, the headgear part. It was just, it did, I, I wish it was more blue. The white looks odd. Right. Plenty of blue the rest of the costume and red trim, but I maybe they should go with a blue headgear with red trim. Well, right. I kind of, I when I was going down the rabbit holes, I found something that said, all right, Wakanda, this is the only man who's taking up the mantle who is not an actual super soldier, and you don't even give him a full helmet. Right. <laughs> Maybe help him out a little bit. And I'm like, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, vibranium yeah. helmet would have come in handy. Yeah. Uh. Not just, well, I'm just going to get a face mask. It's like, at least it's not like, oh, I don't want anyone to know my real identity. Thankfully, right. because that <laughs> wouldn't have done squat. Okay. But anyway, hey, who else is up there? Another man who at first I kept thinking, did he take the serum? Because it's Batrock, this French dude that Sam has been fighting off and on. And I'm like, oh, no, wait, neither of them are super soldiers. That's why they're a little bit more evenly matched. Got it. Yeah, his but, power is picking stuff. Yeah. <laughs> He's, of course, looking for revenge and wants to kill Sam. And I was a little pissed that Carly's like, yeah, you'll go ahead. He's all yours. You can kill him. I'm like, you know what? He was talking to you like a person trying to get you to come down without our crazy U.S. agent over here trying to take you down because he's just batshit. And you're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go kill him. I'm cool. It's like, you know what? You need you needed to get slapped. I'm sorry. <laughs> Open hand and backhand. That's what you deserve because I was pissed. Yeah, her uh, mood swings. I don't know. She's a little schizophrenic. Wait, which one are you now? Right. right? Maybe it's the serum. Yeah. Who knows? But, but hey, guess what? A person who I swore was Kristen Wiig inside the building gives Bucky a phone call from none other than Carly. So, uh, again, there is people everywhere part of this group, yeah. which at the end makes a whole lot more sense right. with the speech. But Bucky and Carly discuss strategies. I don't know. She's like, you're on the wrong side. He's like, nope, I've been on the wrong side. This is not the wrong side. Trust me. And you need to fight for something bigger. And listen, you can't do this. This is going to haunt you. And she finally says, oh, thanks for taking my call and hangs up. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? 
And I think Bucky and I both at the same time come to the realization that he's a distraction. Yes. I'm like, oh my God. Because I was like all into this conversation. Like, oh, maybe Bucky can talk her down. Maybe this is where it's going. Ah, damn. (laughs) Maybe she got pissed because he called her kid. Yeah. (laughs) Well, he is a hundred and some years old. Come on. Yeah. But we have the Flag Smashers taking two armored vehicles with a really interesting lock. How did nobody notice that getting put on? Yeah. And like say anything. But anyway, they're taken off. And then we have a helicopter for rescue too, because apparently we're going to split everybody up. And yeah, I'm sure weird. this is only going to end well. Right. Yeah, I thought Bruce Willis was going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when this was happening and we see this, we're like, okay, Sam's fighting and you see Bucky's like, okay, he has to make a choice which way he's going. That's why I thought we were going to get our new Falcon right? like to help out. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, are we going to get him? Are we going to get him? And I was like, all <laughs> bouncing up and down. Like, I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to go back to movies in a theater because I don't know how to shut the hell up anymore. <laughs> So I'm glad I'm doing this all at home. I actually talked about that watching Mortal Kombat 2 with my husband. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm in so much trouble when we go back to a theater. I've yeah, never been one. Oh, shut up. But anyway, I was excited thinking well, something exciting was going to happen. I mean, it did, but not what I thought exciting. Right. But it leads to more. Yes. And I think the reason that Carly did it this way was strictly to separate Bucky and Sam. Yeah. She felt that they had a better chance of getting away with their plan if they could split them up and not have them work together because the last time she faced them working together she just almost got her butt beat so well that was awfully prescient of her because sam was down in louisiana yeah (laughs) anyway so oh well i guess she had to make sure they were split yep it was clever not bad for a kid yeah well i mean it does make sense too because the line that Bucky ends up throwing out. He's like, I'm I'm not on the ground, man. You do the air thing. (laughs) Like, I don't fly. So Sam (laughs) leaves Batrock and pursues the chop, determined not to let them get away. (laughs) In the process, he saves two NYPD pilots who go careening out of control, earning some applause from the civilians watching. They actually even called him, what, one said Black Falcon, the other guy says, no, that's Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little mysterious where the NYPD helicopter came from. I mean, you could see it's searchlight. Right. And and I'm like, who called these guys? Not that I would have a problem. Of course they'd be called, but usually you see like on the way or answering a call or something. They can know they're just there. Yeah. I assumed they were just kind of in the air with the lockdown happening. Right. Yeah. They had a no fly zone up. So I'm sure that they probably had several choppers in the air, making sure that that didn't get violated. I'm still wondering. It's like Sam just leaves Batrock. It's not like he's tied up or you know, nope. handcuffed. He's like, yeah, later, dude. It's yep, like, um, I gotta do this first. I'll be back. Wait for me here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going over great. I don't know. Turns Throw out him. it was kind of a mistake. Yeah. Really badly throw him out the window. I don't know. Something should have happened. Take him out the window with him. You yeah. know? <laughs> Drop yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Like, here, guys, hold on to him. Yeah. Back on the ground, Carly is ready to kill the hostages if it means getting her message across which earns some wide-eyed expressions from the other Flag Smashers. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, because they did not jump right in with their little catchphrase at first, because this is not what they wanted. And I think at this point, they're like, she is going too far. Yep, definitely. second time, I I think, yeah, Dovich. Right. I heard this from her. He says, you should have said, what, this again? You kill her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as they prepare to take over the vans, Bucky has his own way of flying into action on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Awesome. <laughs> I wanted him to flip it, though, like Steve did. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, use it. Like, I'm going to fly over and then use it as a weapon. Good luck, guys. Yep. I kind of thought he was going to hit that barrier and he was going to pop the wheelie and, and hit that barrier and go flying all the way over the de- <laughs> the armored cars. <laughs> but he didn't. He used his body as a projectile. Well, it's better than knocking down trees. <laughs> oh, <true>. projectile. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So Carly starts a fire to distract the former Winter Soldier. But before she can get further... She hears Morgenthau bellowed from a distance. And you go, this probably is going to go horribly wrong. 
I have to say there were some great memes that came out of it. Yes. <laughs> it's like, well, this moment too, because I seen like, because it's shield, right? Yeah. They're like, when you, when you order authentic hero shield from wish.com <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. and you get this and it's like, would you think you're the baddest in the room? And then you get your ass handed to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I understand at this point what they're trying to do for John Walker, but I was cheering for the Flag Smasher. (laughs) I'm like, beat his ass. He deserves a beat down right now. Like, he needs to wake up. I was so mad at him. Yep. It's John Walker (laughs) brandishing a homemade shield and thirsty for vengeance. Though she apologizes for accidentally killing his partner who oh, she did that badly unimportant i know yes <laughs> well, yeah when she said that i'm like i thought she was kind of getting through and then she's like he was unimportant it's like oh yeah <laughs> oh no. yeah. why he's a little crazy already sure you want to set him off right right <laughs> so the former not our cap doesn't listen as he takes on Carly and the Flag Smashers in turn, Bucky is able to save one van of hostages with his superhuman strength. Up in yeah, that was a hell of a lot because that took a while. Yes, it did. Now, up in the air, Sam executes a pitch-perfect plan with one of the GRC members, dispatching of the baddies while she takes control of the helicopter. And that was pretty sweet. I thought that was kind of cool. Second appearance from Ayla. Yep. Oh, is it? Yeah. She was in Truth, I think. Okay. I hope she enters the Marvel Universe. I was kind of surprised. I'm like, they just have her counting and nobody notices. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. She seems like, what? What? You started to say she seems like, and then I cut you off. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, just a Marvel Universe type of character. Right. want to see again. Competent to the rescue. She could be the wingman for the new Falcon. <laughs> yeah, or something. Ooh, yeah. that would be interesting. Like, right. she's her. Yeah. Oh, now my brain is going to go down another rabbit hole. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sounded what? like Dave had paperwork he's going through. <laughs> Do we need our tinfoil hats, Dave? Don't worry. (laughs) Carly's able to go away from Walker's pursuit for for a second, which happened a lot in this episode. Everyone's getting away. It's enough time for her to send the other van teetering off the scaffolding. One of my favorite words ever. Teetering. (laughs) (laughs) Having to choose between saving civilians or getting revenge, he opts for the former, who it's all for naught when she sends the van off the edge. Were you guys surprised when he made the decision to be a hero? I actually am, because I really thought he was like, screw this, I'm going for it. Right, yeah. But I th- yeah. really thought his entire focus was getting revenge on Carly for his partner. But yeah, it's so it surprised me that he actually made the right decision for one. Yeah, kind of out of yeah, character. I thought he was seeing red too much. That's why I, I thought at this point, okay, this is a great time to introduce another one of the heroes or anti-heroes however you want to look at it if it was punisher to somehow bring them into the mcu and just kind of piss him off more (laughs) yeah because then he's seeing like all these people do stuff that he is like not choosing right so that's why i was like yeah this is the time (laughs) <laughs> Luckily, Sam shows up right in the nick of time to save the day, earning accolades and even the title of Captain America from the bystanders. I yeah, still, like I, he doesn't have super strength, so that means we have to rely on that bat pack right. to jet him up there. That's a lot of weight on that. Yeah. How did he manage it? It kind of reminded me of the mandolin when uh, he's getting his skull crushed by right. uh, one of those black troopers. And it's, you still got to feel it. Your head's not going anywhere. It's inside the helmet as it's being inserted into the bulkheads. And that truck still weighs a ton. So I don't know. I mean, did, he did, did have the couple extra little jetpacks. And yeah, it's I know. Kind of That's stuff. If it's made it from vibranium, <laughs> it's absorbing the, the weight. The vi- yeah, kind of. Mm, and I don't know. Yeah, okay. And they're way ahead of us. So... <sighs> Come on. You give it Wakanda-ish treatment. Yeah. Before Sam and Carly can talk much, uh, Batrock sends up a smoke screen. I'm like, I saw that too. And I'm like, you're setting up a smoke screen? Just shoot him. Don't you have a regular gun? (laughs) No. (laughs) Jeez. Oh, darn. All I have is this magic (laughs) smoke screen gun. You could shoot him with that too, I suppose. Why he didn't have a gun, I don't know. He did later. Yeah. God, they had him favorite. stashed all over, okay? Uh, okay, he just yeah. wasn't at the right place. <laughs> anyway, dur- during this non-shooting episode, the Flag Smashers run off, and Sam, Bucky, and Walker split up to find them. Surprisingly, Carly gets beckoned by Sharon, who's revealed to be the power broker who took her in- and her kind in. 
That's when Steve's face just fell to the floor. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. How much money do you owe people around the world, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> More than I can count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sharon offers they work together to help the world. Batrock arrives, al- alarmed at Sharon's reveal. Yeah, really? She's talky. He asks for four times his pay, and Sharon kills him in response. Way to go, Batrock. <laughs> Sam arrives. <laughs> dummy. Sam arrives just in time to stop Carly from killing Sharon. Once again, he tries to talk her down, sympathizing with her cause, but Carly is past the point of no return. She starts to attack Sam, who refuses to fight back. That wasn't a bad scene. You know, no, that was you know, a he, great scene. Yeah, he can, he, he does have the capacity to communicate with people, even though I, I think he credited uh, Bucky with the same kind of skill. Anyway. Now, do you think she was really past the point of no return at that point? Because no, she just kept no, yelling to no, I don't know. No, fight she was me. just schizophrenic i don't know right it would have proven her correct if he did fight her that i don't know or the adversary or got what she deserved but that that's exactly why he wasn't firing her or right her okay. uh, anyway despite playing in an impressive defense sam eventually finds himself looking down the barrel of carly's gun but before she can fire sharon takes her out knew that was gonna happen yeah well she knows the secret yeah because like, sam didn't yeah. hear it that's right. Uh, as she lies bleeding, all Carly Morgenthau can say is, I'm sorry. I thought she was going to uh, start something like, sh- sh- Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all she can say is, I'm sorry, before she dies. Killed by the person she stole from and in the arms of a man who tried to see eye to eye with her. It was a bit sad. I mean, she, she was just a kid. Right. With a lot of freckle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see Sam solemnly bringing Carly's body outside, where the authorities in the GRC are waiting. And they load her up on a gurney and put her in an ambulance. And I'm like, okay, if she's dead, I understand you need to bring her out. You don't want somebody taking her, taking blood, blah, blah, blah. But Sharon's still alive, bleeding inside. Right. (laughs) What's going on? I kept saying, I'm like, what about Sharon? Like, nobody's trying to help her. She got shot in the stomach, right? Yeah. And then there's plenty of army movies out there. Someone gets shot in the stomach. It's like, uh oh. Yeah. Right. You're dead. But I kept thinking, I wonder, did she take some serum? And that's why she's not trying to let anybody help her. So I'm just leaving that so. there because nothing know. was really said. Right. Yeah. She I would need, she she wouldn't need the, Carly uh, if she had taken the right. inner, if she had taken the serum herself. Well, to get Carly in the group back as opposed to just having her. Just one person. It's a thought. But later, of course, the GRC are thinking, Sam, and we are definitely moving forward on the vote now because they're terrorists and we have to stop these kind of terrorists. And they said terrorists probably 15 times what I felt <laughs> like in that few seconds. And that turns Sam a little snippy. And he delivers... What I thought was like the most amazing speech right here, because it's one of those things. It's like you don't think about it because you're just using words. And of course, the cameras just happen to be there to pick it up and broadcast. Right. Convenient. But, you know, he disagrees with them labeling them terrorists because this could have been true for everybody looking in on the peacekeepers because there's so many. And you're just sending them in to clear out refugee camps and move people with guns doing what you want. So which side are you looking in on? And I thought that was interesting because history is written by the victor, right? Kind of the same thing. And he brings up the helplessness that the GRC felt as hostages. So why can't you empathize with those that you're making feel the exact same way? And I really thought that one guy, I didn't even bother learning his name because I wanted to punch him too. (laughs) The GRC guy, like, Uh, I thought he was just going to be like, no, this has to be done. Like, I totally see that (laughs) happening. And like kind of beating on his chest. And I'm so glad that they didn't go that route because then Sam would have had to punch him. Yeah. everybody (laughs) might have been worth it and then sam going into the the speech like i was saying you know every time i pick this thing up gesturing to the shield i know there's millions of people who are going to hate me for it and i feel their eyes on me now even here and their judgment and there's nothing i can do to change it but i'm still here no super serum no blonde hair or blue eyes and i'm like oh that was a nod for isaiah yep the only Mm. power i have is that i believe we can do better and oh my god just watching that i'm like oh my heart is swelling this is so <laughs> awesome and there was a lot of people 
on the internet, big surprise, yep. that had a problem with it. And I was like, this is exactly what he's talking about. Right. It's like, literally, this is canon in the comic book. And you're pissed off that they're doing this. And it's yeah. not like it's been a na- brand new comic series. This has been for a while that they had Sam on there and then hit Bucky on there. And they had, I can't remember how many people they've gone through because I, I don't read this this particular one. But I know it's canon. And so screaming about, oh, I can't believe they're changing it. They're just doing it because fill in whatever reasoning you're going to say. But it's like, oh, my God, this speech was exactly for you. The toxic people. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like, and you still didn't get it. Of course not. I just want to get their way. Yep. But I did like when they were cutting to the various people who were watching either in person or on TV. So you see Sarah, Isaiah, Torres. Like I said, I'm so mad Torres wasn't like there in the wings because I'm like, come on, Torres should be there. <laughs> and even Bucky. But I mean, Bucky just kind of like, yep, I knew this was was uh was coming and I finally had talked it out he knew it and then when they show Isaiah and Isaiah kind of tearing up and he's nodding in agreement and I think they show his grandson too right and I thought his grandson was kind of going from the screen to Isaiah like wow okay I I don't know how to feel right now because you know he's known so much of Isaiah's story that we didn't know so I was just like this is great this is this is perfect and then I was just like I said so mad with what people were saying on the internet because I'm like, oh my God, you don't even see that this is exactly who that speech was toward. Right. It's like you doing this. Yeah. But it applies to today's society. Oh, yes. 110%. Yeah. Yep. So they want Sam, to get what they want. Yes. That's all they want. Yeah. So Sam continues saying that the GRC's problem is that they don't have people in the room who would be hit the hardest by the decisions they're making. He points out that though flawed, Carly's beliefs were so supported that it allowed them to overthrow some of the strongest governments in the world. True to her final words, there are plenty more where she came from to oppose what the GRC is doing. I thought that was interesting right there. Yes. Hmm. He tells her, you people have as much power as an insane god or a misguided teenager. Question is, how are you going to use it? I love that. Yeah. I absolutely loved it because, again, like you just said, speaking to everything going on in the world right now. Right. And yes, how many people who are being affected by what governments do are ever actually in the room, even though we have elected officials. And yeah, I'm saying that in, in quotes because how many of them are working for us and how many are working for the lobbyists or whatever right so Mm. this was just really powerful too but again the people who need to see this and really let it sink in never will no Mm. (laughs) sam drops the mic walking away to see bucky and sharon while the bucky tried to lighten it up yeah Yeah. (laughs) i was texting yeah while the former warmly greets him as cap the later apologizes for killing carly but sam has no ill will for his former friend intending to keep his promise of a pardon damn it sam (laughs) (laughs) meanwhile i understand though he wanted to keep his word because he didn't know yes absolutely yeah there was no denying that he still thought sharon was who we thought she was and not who she's actually become so meanwhile the remaining flag smashers are escorted away to be transported to the raft and things take an initial turn though when one of the officers detaining them seems to be an undercover supporter now do you think he really was or that he was the one who helped set up the next moment no i think he was I can see it going either way because... I don't think he set up the next moment. Yeah. (laughs) But before they can make another clean getaway, their car suddenly explodes. And the detonator is in the hands of Dave's favorite character, the butler. (laughs) I wondered who that guy was. I'm like, why does he look familiar? Who's this guy just kind of sitting there with the the detonator? (laughs) Now I know. It's like the way every show ends. The butler did it. Yes. (laughs) And we cut to the raft, and despite being in prison, the Baron was able to have the last laugh as he hears news of their deaths and serenely relaxes in his cell. 
Yeah, get a transistor radio and a nice book. Yeah, not yeah, so just bad. Happen to have that going. Oh, yeah, what's going I know. On? Oh, uh-huh. just, I don't know who runs the prison. Like, oh, just give him a radio and lots of books. <laughs> Basically, to shut him up is what I probably. Yeah, have. I guess. Like he keeps looking at me doing the head tilt thing and talking. Just give him something to make him stop. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the middle games with the guards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see uh, Zemo doing that. You damn right. <laughs> don't give me a. Don't make me give you a head tilt. Yeah. <laughs> So, news of the bombing also hits the phone of Val, don't call me Val, who teases whether or not she assisted with it. Is that going to be her thing? She always going to say that, hey, maybe I did that. Oh, no, I didn't. But maybe I did. Yeah. That, to me, that gets old. Yeah. <laughs> she passes the time while waiting for Walker, who's trying on his new outfit, his Captain America uniform, but clad in black instead of red, white, and blue. Things are about to get weird, she foreshadows. They don't need a Captain America. They'll need a U.S. agent. Wow. Yeah. Oh, like, really? Okay. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of questions. What does she mean by weird? Did she know something <laughs> that we don't know? And I mean, that's more backdoor pilot stuff. Right. I'm really not happy with. And she leaves her new recruit, the newly renamed Walker, celebrates with his wife, repeatedly exclaiming, I'm back. And he's got a little Carly in him, too. Well, which one of you is back? Psycho version or the <laughs> newly minted hero? Right. Well, they want both, though. Yeah, they want both. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Back in New York, Bucky is finally heeding Sam's words and changing his approach to making amends. He visits Mr. Nakajima and finally confesses to killing his son, tearfully saying he didn't have a choice. Oh, I was crying. <laughs> as soon as you seen him knock on the door, I think I, my tears started to spill. Because I'm like, oh no! Yeah, here we go. I, I didn't mind happen? him saying it wasn't me, but he should have followed up, but I'm still sorry. Right. I'm not sure he said that. I don't think he did. Anyway, but it, finally, this moment happened. This appeared the first and most painful step of Bucky's new journey. Sometime later, Dr. Rayner receives a gift in her office. It's Bucky's book with a list of names entirely crossed out. I miss that office. You can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. The background. <laughs> he thanks his former therapist for her help, having completed an essential part of leaving the Winter Soldier behind. Unless you trust the title card at the end of the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if we don't see a gift going to Wakanda, it's not true. Right. <laughs> Yeah. But we get to be in Baltimore for a moment and Sam stopping in to visit Isaiah. And oh my gosh, his grandson still doesn't have any damn manners. No. <laughs> no. I, but, I'd listen to Sam about that if I was him. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him that, that look, too. I need some manners. Man, I'm going to smack you. You better yeah, quit. Isaiah congratulates smack. him on his success as the GRC listened to his warnings and stood down on their plans. Now that surprises me because how often does that happen? Not often. Right. And Isaiah, although calling him special, warns him that the fight won't be easy, which, of course, we know the fight won't be easy. (laughs) Is it ever? When is anything ever easy? I know. It's going to have to put up with uh, bringing uh, Sharon back. That won't be easy. (laughs) This should be interesting. But Sam is ready, eager to fight for his country, and he has helped build it, and he bled for it, and so no matter what, he cannot deny what he is and who he is. And I am so excited for this because I want him to be Captain America and like us to see more and I want this movie hurry up I don't want to wait three years <laughs> but anyway he doesn't just come to talk though as a surprise Sam's like hey why don't you go clean up because Isaiah was in his little garden which I'm jealous of his garden because it is thriving more than mine let me tell yes. you <laughs> Carl Lumley is a big man yes he oh. is <laughs> I interviewed him. He is yes, so did. sweet. <laughs> That's cool. He is the nicest guy. Anyway, so he's like, go get cleaned up. We got somewhere to go. And of course, his grandson's like, where are we going? I've been like, you were just rude to me 10 seconds ago. You want me to yeah. take you somewhere? No. <laughs> That's because I'm spiteful. That's why I'm not Captain America. Right. But anyway, he brings Isaiah and Eli to the Smithsonian and the Captain America exhibit. Now, at first, I was kind of wondering why. Right. But there's a new part of the installation. And again, cheers. An entire wing dedicated to Isaiah's history, complete with a gold statue of the man. As much as the government tried to erase him, he's here and he'll never be forgotten. And Isaiah was speechless for once and reduced to tears of happiness, embracing Sam in a hug. And I kind of wanted to see more, like if they were going to show us like the, his unit and give us a little bit more information, which I know this is like the first step. So I'm hoping that there's more there and that his grandson, perhaps if he goes forward with Young Avengers, mm-hmm. ends up going there to learn more. And I mean, it would just 
just be exciting. But the fact that this was there, like I said, I was in tears. I'm like, this is so awesome. Yep. Sam, once again, does the right thing. <laughs> Even though yeah, that's not what not. Isaiah wanted. Right. <laughs> Good thing he had tears in his eyes and hugged him because it could have yeah. gone bad. Well, Isaiah didn't want him to let anyone know that he was alive. Right. And this didn't. Yeah. Back, you're a statue now, too. Yeah. So back home, the joyous mood continues as we go back to New Orleans for a good old-fashioned shrimp boil. Sam gets to reconnect with his community and snap pictures with all the fans of the new Captain America. No secret identity there. Nope. Meanwhile, Bucky gets to play with Sarah's kids, mainly just holding his arm out so they can swing off of it. That was cracking me up. He just has it out. and The kids are, like, hanging off it. And he's just talking and what drinking a beer or something just like da, 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 da. i was like look at this yeah, sarah was uh ta- one of the people talking to him too right yep yeah watch i think out. so watch out sam yeah oh that meme <laughs> i sent you guys that might yep. be true a sign of his progression from the brooding nature that occupied his mind at the end of it all sam looks out at the water thinking about what lies ahead as bucky comes up and silently stands next to him and the two men smile before walking off together I love that we get this, too, because I don't think we've seen Bucky smile, honestly, since First Avenger. Yeah, so I think it's he, like, smiled, he has been, he has smiled a couple times in this series, but. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, in yeah, in Falcon and Winter Soldier, he right, smiled. But, but yeah. since First Avenger, I don't think right. in any of the movies. No. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Like that progression, like he's finally him again. Right. And no matter what they claimed in the previous episode, a friendship has been been made. Yeah, I guess they're not going to go their separate ways now, huh? No. A new title, <laughs> Captain America and the Winter Soldier, shows a partnership may be as well. Yay. Yay. I was, I had some squeeze. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. We'd want to leave that party atmosphere down there, too. Yeah. These people are great. <laughs> well, I'm going to walk off all by myself and brood. Or, <laughs> so are we done? No, we're not done. Pardon me. There's more. Well, while it seems like a happy ending for our heroes, some trouble is brewing. In the post credit scene, Sharon is put before the same council John Walker was, but the nature of the meeting is oppositional in tone as the government apologized to her for the grief that caused her and her family. To repay their debt, he offered her a full pardon and a spot back in the CIA, which she accepts. Her honor. But outside, Sharon calls one of her associates, gloating now that they have the government secrets and weapon prototypes they can use at, at their disposal. Uh, I bet Steve even sank even further. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm take, really hoping my it's head against not the wall. really her. <laughs> it seems like you can take Sharon out of Mandrapur, but you can't take Mandrapur out of Sharon. And while oh. everything may be flying high for Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes, at the moment there may be bigger threats looming in their own backyard, which confirms that when it rains, it Mandrapurs. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How long did you work on that one? <laughs> oh, it doesn't take long at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know because, okay, first of all, earlier, and I forgot to mention, there was a couple superhero landings, which I had to say, yes, that's awesome. And all I kept thinking was Deadpool. They're going to do it. They're going to do the superhero landing. But right. back to this. Everyone who had watched previous to me watching this were posting, oh, my God, the post credit scene. That's so great. I can't believe that happened. And I'm like, I didn't think it was great. I was kind of pissed. And right. I'm still hoping that Sharon is like a scroll or something that it's not her or that she's taken over. I don't know. Because, yeah, I'm like, if Aunt Peggy was here, she would be in so much trouble. Oh, yeah. Peggy would have her over her lap and. Popping that ass big time. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? This makes me think that Sharon calls somebody. Was she calling uh, the Contessa? And, and the weird part is that all his his new equipment that Sharon's going to sell to her because apparently she can afford it, and she'll Sharon will be equipping U.S. agent. And that's the weird part. I don't know. Well, it could be anything in the Marvel universe, <laughs> right? Exactly. Like gi- giant dinosaur showing up from outer space. Why not? <laughs> Still, I, I, I wondered that. Uh, Sharon's working with uh, Contessa there. Right. It yeah. might be, it might be directly uh, arming up U.S. Asian or whatever Thunderbolts follow behind. Right. Just a tin, tinfoil hat theory for you. Yeah. Which is why I thought we were going to see Madam Hydra over yeah. on the raft talking to Zemo yeah. because the whole Thunderbolt thing. But I mean, nothing was official. So th- that's interesting, though, thinking Sharon's talking to her. But she did say line up our usual buyers. So maybe she is just talking to one of her people and the Contessa could be one of her usual buyers, though. Right. Absolutely. Well, there's one theory that maybe uh, Contessa acted as the uh, 
power broker. Right. Who knows? Oh, well, someday God. I'm sure it'll be clear. Right. And really? You yeah. kind of wonder because of what Val said, if she had had something to do with the car bomb that killed the rest of the flag smashers. But then you if think, she didn't want to have any additional super soldiers out there. Right. But she's got one working for her now in John Walker. Yeah. And that doesn't fly with Zemo. So yeah. how is that, you know, I so maybe that partnership isn't there and Val was just blowing smoke up her up their ass <laughs> saying that she might have had something to do with it or unless she just hasn't told Zemo that she's got Walker working for her now, which yeah. could be. So yeah, we've got three biggies that survived and are still able to do things with <laughs> Val, Zemo, and now Sharon. So could be very interesting. Well, I'm not sure. In the, uh, one last thought, these bodies were incinerated and certainly killed. But there's plenty of uh, bodies to go around. Oh, yeah. And they can always extract uh, super soldier serum out of the blood, or at least yep. start work on it all over again. Yep. I'm sure that's going to happen. Yeah. Mm, why not? No, I'm saying I'm sure that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I know. Why not? I, yeah, I, was, I wasn't being sarcastic at all. Yeah, even though Sharon did say that, oh, well, now that super soldiers are off the table, well, not really, Sharon. Not, not really, yeah. She could find Nagel. She could get a hold of one of those bodies and find another chemist to do it. And we killed. don't know where Car Carly's body was taken. Right. Yeah, that I know. Could have take, been taken straight to... Uh, <laughs> right to the lab. The yep, lab. Right to the lab. All right, well, we would love to hear your thoughts on each and every episode this season. Go to www.fangirlzone.com and click on the contact link where you will find several ways to contact us via email or through social media. Please review and rate us on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcast. With good ratings and reviews, it helps other fans of the show find us, as there are plenty of other Marvel podcasts out there. Tell your friends. We hope you're enjoying our podcast, and don't forget to check out the other great Fangirl Zone podcasts. For example, the Mudhorn Clan cast. Yeah, that's a you good one. <laughs> Personal favorite. <laughs> you can find us at www.fangirlzone.com, and easiest way to contact us, if you don't want to send us something directly through contact, us at fangirlzone.com is to go to our contact page and click on any of those links because we have email, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have everything. Yay! And I'm so happy we made it through this first season. And I'm really hoping we get more, but I think we are going to get a movie. So instead of it being another season, we'll see you at the movie for Captain America and Winter Soldier. So for this episode of the Marvelous Post Split Podcast, I'm Steve. I don't fly, man. That's your thing. I'm Sean Fangirl S. Still mad about Sharon. And this is Avenger Dave. And you know what? This isn't over. I can think of one person whose punishment I won't be sharing because this is a family show. But if this was football, they'd have to cart her off the field. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat. There is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the fangirl zone.